So in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how we carry out a um, continuity test of the CPC, or the circuit protective conductor, for a radial circuit. So I have a number of circuits on this installation. Um, I should point out we've already previously isolated the installation, and this is shown in a previous video. Uh, so the installation is dead, so this is otherwise known as a dead test. And we need to prove that all of these CPCs uh, are actually connected to the final circuits. So we do that individually, and I'm going to demonstrate how we do that on one particular circuit. The circuit I've chosen is a radial circuit to a socket outlet. Uh, and this is fed from the circuit breaker here. Obviously, to identify that, we would initially look at the labelling of the consumer unit to identify the circuit we wish to test. Um, so, um, to carry out the test, uh, in accordance with the descriptions given in Guidance Note 3, we need to put a temporary link between R1, the line conductor, and R2, the CPC. We can do this in a number of ways. We can put a temporary link in between the main earth terminal and the top of the circuit breaker. We can take out the two conductors and connect them together in a terminal block. Um, what I'm going to do is connect the uh, R1, so I'm going to remove it from the circuit breaker, and I'm going to insert that into the main earth terminal. So I can just find the, uh, the termination here and place that in the terminal. Uh, we need to make sure we get a good connection, so that's uh, screwed into the main earth terminal. So now we've effectively linked together R1 and R2. So the method I'm demonstrating is known as the R1-R2 method. So with the link in at the consumer unit end, we're now going to come to the end of the circuit and measure between R1 and R2 at the socket. And if we've got continuity of the CPC, then we should get a, a low resistance reading all the way back to the consumer unit and back to the socket outlet. So, <coughs> I'm going to use uh, our tester here, otherwise known as a low resistance ohm meter. Um, I'm going to plug this in at the socket and we've got our connections between R1 and R2. Bearing in mind that when we're doing a continuity test we need to ensure that the resistance of the leads have been nulled, so I've done this previously. So any connections uh, in the meter and its interconnections must be nulled to ensure that we're not including the resistance of the, the leads. So I've done this previously. I've now connected between R1 and R2 at the socket and now I'm going to measure that resistance. So I'm just going to place the meter up here so it's visible. <coughs> I'll just place that there. Um, we select uh, continuity or low resistance uh, depending on the type of meter you're using. So, and we've got the leads plugged in here. Now simply run the test. Um, so we can see now that we've got a reading of 1.36. Now you might think that that's quite a high reading, uh, depend, bearing in mind that the socket is right next to the consumer unit, but in the real world this socket could be several metres away from the consumer unit. So that we're giving here a sort of a, a representative reading of R1, R2. So by seeing that reading there we know we've got continuity between the um, earthing at the socket outlet and the main earth terminal, which is the main aim of the test. If there were multiple sockets on this circuit, we would measure at each socket uh, until we get to the furthest point, and then it's the highest reading of R1, R2 that we then record on the schedule of test results. Um, and then having completed the test, making sure then that we remove the link and place it back into the circuit breaker and that completes the test.